Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming this morning, and I hope you're enjoying your uh, Drupal South so far. So today, we'll be talking about the challenges of designing an HCD component-based design system and Drupal theme. So in this session, we'll just cover a few topics, and then we'll talk about the challenges, and we'll talk about a quick introduction about myself, what we were trying to achieve with the design system, our approach, and the top five challenges, and <laughs> Figma design system as well, a bit, a bit of a quick walkthrough with that, and the final result and outcomes. So a quick introduction on myself, my name is Akhil, I work with Salsa Digital. I've worked in tech for the last 20 years, uh, mostly around the front end, UX, design, web design, and also a graphic designer uh, in the early days. In the last 11 years, I've been working with government for eight years with Department of Communications and the Arts. We worked mostly with the GovCMS sites since 2014. And then the last three years, I've been with Salsa Digital as a digital engagement manager and now as marketing as well. So, pop quiz because everyone loves tests. And also because I didn't write my title for my presentation, that will serve me. I'm um, putting in jargon. So, does anyone know what HCD stands for? <laughs> few hands. Quickly, maybe just uh, how many front end or designers do we have here today? A few back end technical and other others who just might have mistakenly come into the room. Okay, a bit of a balance. Okay, cool. Um, so HCD. There's three choices. You can pick a choice. First one, hyperactive child disorder. That happens to be my hyperactive child. Human certified documentation. Or human centered design? Thank you. <laughs> it's definitely not the first one. <laughs> okay, so human centered design. So, oh, let's repeat. Okay, great. Uh, is there anyone here from Victoria Government by any chance? Oh, fantastic. So, I found a great definition on your site about the human centered design definition, and also there's a really good playbook there if anyone else is interested. But I took the definition there. It's um, human centered design is an approach to problem solving that puts people we are designing for the heart of the process. There's the attribution there. <laughs> and a design system. So, now a quick question. So, how many people have gone through, created a really large document? have typed everything out, get to the end and realize you've got to make that one change which is all the way through the document. You know, you have to do the search and replace and it's, it's tedious but also really painful and, and scary, right? Everyone's mostly out of that. Well, imagine if you had something like a glossary that you could just change one term there in the glossary of that document and then it would just change everywhere else. That would be really handy, right? So a design system does something very similar. Um, there's a structure um, and you've got a, a library of centralized components um, features and attributes that you can change in one place, then that propagates across the entire website or design that you have. My notes here are very small. So it's better. So, um, according to the Nielsen Group, oh, the design system includes uh, feature enhancements that can be reused, the UI and starter kits, but the design system itself is, uh, according to Nielsen Group, is a set of standards designed to manage at scale by reducing redundancy and creating a shared language and producing visual consistency across several pages and channels. So it's there really to help us reproduce patterns, uh, design features. Um, if you build a website, there's a great component over on this page over here that you built for this page, but now it doesn't work with the other pages. It's something that you can reuse over and over, and then you can manipulate and modify if you need to. But it makes the management of this across many pages, hundreds of pages, thousands of pages, much more manageable, faster and efficient. And there are various different design systems as well. So when we were going out to, des to design this new design system, what were we trying to achieve? And what was the problem space? So the problem space that we had was that there was quite a few high, it's quite a high cost to build a design system or a website itself. So there is obviously the, the visual design and the UX component of the work. So building a visual theme for the site, for any site, uh, can be a lengthy process. Um, you know, weeks, months, <laughs> years, hopefully not. Uh, validating and testing the theme, uh, accessibility testing on the theme, 
And then also, especially when you actually have to build a bespoke design or visual elements each time you have a new website. Project times can be quite long, um, as I mentioned earlier with the design, the process of validating, building the site, doing these repeated, repeated patterns and repeated activities and, and tasks uh, can take time and add to the project itself when you really just want to build the website. Having a separate project for every single site you do and starting from scratch to a point uh, means that there's a lot of inconsistencies. The way that you did the button five months ago, two months ago, a year ago is slightly different to what you do now. The technology behind managing some of that stuff has changed slightly, so the experiences hopefully improve and evolve, but it's always these inconsistencies. What you hopefully picked up that was really good last time, did you pick it up in the new project and bring it over? And as I mentioned before, the repeated patterns of user of UI or, or journeys or user journeys and things that you want to uh, show to the user, you need to build them each time. You need to design them each time. You need to then apply accessibility and other testing and other uh, activities around that. And as I mentioned before, the rep repetition of basic uh, build and development. So once you have the designs, themes, validated everything, then you've got to build it all over again, which you probably built six months ago in the same or similar project. And then in general, just the lack of flexibility of um, managing a site. So if you build a site, release it, then you have to be able to manage that. Now, the not having a design system, that's where I mentioned before, where we have components that you have to manually update across the site and colors and components, etc. So, our vision for a design system was Civic Theme. In late 2019 and early 2020, we decided to kind of come up with a design system. We were conceptualizing this design system that was Civic Theme. Now, Civic Theme is an open source design system that aims to provide a quick, easy and cost efficient a solution to build new websites. The out of the box Civic theme would deliver a high quality set of components and features that we used immediately. Web publishers and administrators can create and manage pages and page layouts without any coding. So how hard could that be? Considering that the end of life is coming up, we thought that it would be a great solution or something to have to be able to make this transition from D7 to D9 and above much easier. And especially, we wanted to help smaller organizations that may not have the capability or capacity internally to run a full upgrade or, or um, project. So, design, uh, civic theme, the concept. I just found the screen and that's handy. Uh, Civic Theme is an open source project. It was a design system that, that Salsa developed, and the project is maintained by, by uh, Salsa Digital. It's made up of uh, two components effectively. So there's the Figma design systems, uh, the Figma design files, and then the actual design system as a code base. So there's a relationship between the two, uh, and we effectively bid the, did the designs in Figma design, and then those can be used by people or any agency or anyone. And then any changes we make to the design system are made in Figma and then flow down to the build. And then the build and the represent that. So the build is open source and the code is available on GitHub. And our approach to doing the project. So there's just a four step approach. We worked with uh, using uh, our customers as research, talking and involved in talking with our clients and reviewing dozens of existing websites with more interfaces. We also looked at the common design patterns that were frequently used and components that, were, that are being used on websites. The former Australian government design system which we reviewed uh, had key features um, such as using the accessibility colors of dark and light um, and the font guidelines. And just the, font, the, the selection of components, including styles, buttons, and headers, and cards that are existing in the design system there. We looked at those. We also looked at the original GLCMS Gen 1 UI kit. And that was a really good source of information for us to kind of see what was adapted, what was used, and was always still relevant today, and what was being used by agencies and, and uh, clients today. So the last part was that we had our own designers have a look um, and then bring in kind of an updated uplift of uh, the design system, the patterns and best practices that were around today uh, versus when the original design system was brought out. So we also looked at some of the lessons learned we had from our user testing and from our customer um, feedback. 
We also focused on the, um, the ability to have something out of the box that was AA or AAA uh, tested and leveraging from the Norman Nielsen Group research and Vision, Vision Australia validation of some of the work that we did to kind of bake that in if we could. That was the approach. So we then also um, looked at uh, different features and decided to, fit, to include or not include those. So the top five challenges that we encountered. Number one. Designing for the user. We found that the teams that are asking questions uh, about, or like, uh, how long is a piece of string <laughs> for development? Um, who are we building for? What features do we need to build first, second, or even build at all? So what we did is we needed to narrow down our audience. So we identified key personas and looked at the early stage, at least looked at what the uh, visitors and users were actually using. And that was based off the approach earlier. Naturally, the, the, oh, these are the visitors. So naturally, the site visitor was the highest uh, or the primary audience that we looked at. But we also looked at it from the web administrator's point of view, since they'd also be managing the site and the experience for them was quite important as well. And then content editors as well. They got a look in at the end. So we proceeded using standard product development framework, so building a product. And it was coupled with client-led projects. And this was to directly inform the work we were doing based on each of the projects, the needs in the build as we were encountering these uh, projects and working with Civic Theme. Number two, number one. So working with our clients, we were able to use uh, specific projects and some of the clients that we worked with included Civil Aviation Authority, CASA, and they introduced their own design patterns that were then user tested and validated with a design agency external to this process. However, those designs were uh, contributed back to the initial civic theme designs and then they were uplifted for the early UI patterns and informed what we were doing. The next agency we worked with was Australian Energy Infrastructure Commissioner, or ACLE, and ACLE adopted the designs that we had in the Figma design files and the system itself in their early assessment to actually come across and use the, uh, and upgrade their project. So we did basically a mapping of their existing components to the out-of-the-box um, to the out-of-the-box Civic theme, uh, which was then used in Discovery uh, to actually build up from. And last of all, the government agency that cannot be named <laughs> We, they based their designs on the Figma designs and adapted and extended where they wanted to improve. So they used the Figma designs and really tested and really pushed the boundaries on what we had there. And were able to kind of almost build out their own adapted version. At the end of that process, we looked at what was adapted and what we thought was um, quite, uh, quite good and an improvement and uplifted. And we brought that feedback into the project and into the actual initial Civic Theme MVP release. So the second challenge we had was actually making meaningful improvement to the Australian government design system in gold. So the AGDS was launched in 2018 by the Digital Transformation Agency, and it was to provide a consistent and improved citizen experience. So the AGDS was also then decommissioned in September 2021. Um, so that was decommissioned after we had started this project. But the AGDS was then replaced with gold design system um, and this was used as a way to ensure that users who were still using the former AGDS design system still had some support and were able to continue using that, that uh, framework. Um, the, the original Australian government design system was widely used by the GovCMS uh, community and so therefore had a fairly large base um, that were still using that. The other thing that we wanted to do is just make sure that we didn't build anything that was just um, completely uh, off the grid there. So we wanted to make sure that we built something that was meaningful and useful, not just something that made us feel good. We wanted to really use uh, real users and solve real problems for the community out there. And so challenge three 
was actually trying to fit in product development in a busy agency. We didn't build products. We don't have a dedicated product team. And we decided to use Agile. We decided to use Agile-based product development approach. Um, and that allowed us to be able to look at what we're doing and, um, and do that in a more uh, manageable approach. So we decided to just go all in and, and build it out as a project. Uh, it's working. So the first, the fourth, <laughs> and uh, fourth and most interesting challenge was the basic color palette was not simple. The brand color mapping, components color mapping, and the light and dark theme contrast for accessibility was very difficult. Uh, we we actually found this um, one of the more complex parts of the project. Um, Saying that we had a brand color, most agencies might have two or three colors, which is perfectly fine. But then we needed to apply those two or three colors across almost thousands of components and how that worked and which components picked up the color, which one didn't, where did they go? Some of the clients didn't want the particular component on the home page to show this color and that color. So this mapping and understanding who needs what where, especially for the colors, is very complex. Um, just understanding the different variations of colors that can be produced for the whole site itself from a centralized um, brand color of three or four colors was very complex itself. So we did end up managing to actually solve that in a way. Um, that'll actually come up to the next uh, challenge, but we did come up with a color mapping um, system and it's now just been released as of last night <laughs> that we made a final release with a color mapper which actually shows you the flow of where the colors can change you now have a set of kind of two colors, a dark color set and a light color set. You don't have to use those, but if you do use components that are on a dark color, they will work. And you can also preview the color combinations in the site. So when you build the Drupal site now, um, the color mapping is actually built into it, including, and also the Figma design system has that also. So if you change the palette within Figma, it actually shows you what that looks like through the entire design system and the Figma files. And the last one was, you can't be everything to everyone. So no matter how hard we tried, or well, you try, you can't be everything to everyone. So the more we added to the project, the longer it was going to take to get to, to everyone. We had to learn how to draw a line uh, to kind of say what was in core product and what was not. Uh, and that was definitely one of the more challenging things as well. So the top five was recapping, designing for the end user, making a meaningful improvement on the design system, trying to fit in per, uh, product development within a busy design agency. Basic color palette was very complex and lastly we couldn't do everything for everyone. So I'm going to try and do a quick walkthrough. So the first part of the design system we're using Figma. Is everyone or anyone familiar with the Figma? Files, Figma system, yes. Well, it's basically an online tool. So it's very light work. Uh, a little bit just to find it But Figma, Figma is a tool that you can use kind of like Illustrator or like other kind of design um, program, but it's a web based. And it's quite powerful because we can have a lot of people working on the same design system, but we can also share that design system um, as we have done in certain schools. Okay, so this is the online design system. You can use Figma if you have it downloaded to your desktop. So we have instructions built into the files. I'm not going to go through all the instructions, but there are instructions there on how to use it. Effectively, there's also instructions on how to contribute back to the design system. So it's an open source project. So if you have suggestions or changes, you can put that, uh, suggest that back to the team. The core team will look at it and as per open source, potentially have that back in the core. Now for the fun bits. I'm hoping they load because they're fairly large. So we have a few different sections in this Figma design system. We have a UI kit, which basically is a, the menu or the library of all the components and all the variations. Okay, so as you can see there, I'm struggling to move this, but um, you can see there are all the different components, including typography, right down to spacing, grid layouts, everything is in here. So to, to have an idea of what there is, this is the library. You can then see what this looks like. 
and then apply that to your new designs. But there's also pages. So you can now see them actually as what a page would potentially look like. And this is really the key. So these are also designed with mobile in mind. So there you can see the design system components built out into a page. You can see there's the headers, and all of these are uh, component based. So you can actually move these elements around and you can change the order, the color, the, the layout even. So these components don't have to be there. These can be reconfigured. So these are nav cards. The nav cards can be changed. You can also change the information, the fields that are being displayed and that's all managed through the, um, the con content component itself. So there's a few different variations, some hero banners, footers. So out of the box, all of this is available. This design is all the basic um, out-of-the-box components. So we have a few different examples of what those any pages look like and you can use these or you can then use this and then change yourself to whatever you need. And So as I mentioned before the color palettes, this I can see me. Oh. There are instructions on here. So basically there's the color palettes. So in the design system, you can actually change these colors here that are hex based, and that will apply to all the components that are already built in the UI kit. So then you have your pages, you can re-manipulate the colors there and actually see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to finish that. If you want to see any more details, please let me know. I can give you the details. Okay. Let's go back to the slides. So what we ended with is a user-focused product. We were able to produce a product that was good for content managers had greater capability to develop pages without technical development, minimal coding. For site builders, there was a lot of out-of-the-box ready-to-use components and features and functions. For designers, it allowed them to focus more on the design side of things um, rather than the actual technical build and having to make it compliant with certain things. You can now use the design system and more focus on the layout for users and that digital experience rather than trying to build the components underneath. And, large, and lastly, for, for uh, agencies, there was a large reduction in build costs or design costs. Instead of having to spend months trying to validate just the basic components, the button colors and the layouts, you now have a, a, a base of a product which is much higher um, to start with and therefore you can save a cost. And if you wanted to build on top of that, you still could. So you can use this as a base project and then build upon, upon that. So generally we were able to, to quite a few things. I'm going to just quickly skip over this one. And that was our product. So we have Civic Theme. It's now launched live uh, with the design system and the code base. The code base is also available. Again, if you want to see any details there, you can come and see us at the booth. But does anyone have any questions? I don't know, do we have time for questions? Yes? Um, yeah, just a quick question. I know you touched a little bit on Yes. Are there any tools or processes you use? Sorry, I'll say that again. Yes, yes, um, are there any tools or processes you use to maintain a, or to ensure you maintain a minimum level of accessibility with your design system components? Yes, absolutely. So part of the process of building the, the, design, the design components was that we did both a compliance check, we well, actually did a rationale to the original government design system why we you, uh, built this particular component and how that mapped back. And so that was the rationale. And on the accessibility side, we actually did assessments on every single component. Um, both of those documents are available online and you can, go, you can actually go through and see the assessments we did for accessibility, where it meets, and also the tests we did. The intention is that when you design something, you can use the same test to do, uh, test your adapted or extended version of those components. Perfect, thank you. So it's one more there.
Because you initially set up um, the, the uh, design system, if you have new projects and you have new components that are helpful, do you integrate it back into the design system or is it mostly static? So depending on how you wanted to use a design system, uh, you could either pick up the design system just for the design phase and then move into builds and then adapt it there. Or if you wanted to maintain your own design system for your organization, you can use that design system and kind of adapt or fork. And then if you feel that those components or features functionalities are, um, are interesting enough, are common enough, they can be contributed back as an open source pro uh, uh, process to build back in a core. Um, so ideally, as much as you can get into core from, cost, from custom builds or adaptations would be great, because naturally the maintenance is not on the project team, it's on the internal core team. But yes, there is a process to be able to do that, both on the design level and on the build side. Another question. Yes. Um, did you build out your design system in React or Angular, or was it just more Drupal-based? That's a very good question. It's all theme-based uh, and Drupal. Um, so. <laughs> That's great. So again, if you ha uh, I can clarify that if you like, uh, if you come to the booth. But yes, it was all theme based. So we're trying to keep it out of Drupal. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, taking up this de design system. So since the uh, the Aust Australian gold has actually gone away, I have so far uh, got the opportunity to work on the NSW DDS, this Australian uh, Gov CMS as well. Uh, I, I think. The salsa is actually uh, solving a piece of the puzzle, which is actually still available, still uh, in the Gov CMS. So, what's the salsa commitment towards maintaining this? <laughs> so, say you mentioned yes. that this is going to be a contributed one. So, what's the salsa committed commitment towards maintaining this contributed uh, design system? So, uh, as a as a project owner, uh, as a uh, te technical consultant, to when I provide yes. the advice to my clients. I always try to put the projects on a path, or or on a pro on on towards the projects which are actually maintained by the yes. healthy contributors. I respect the the con contributions done by Salsa. So what's the what's the commitment of Salsa towards? Is it a just a POC project, or what's the Salsa commitment for it? No, yeah, so yeah, interesting. Uh, good question about that. Um, definitely, we'll be maintaining that for long term. This is a long term project, so we've uh, built. The initial project it's now live and we'll be supporting that so the next phase for us will be building the community and uh, and generating um, as much as we can interest in using that and uh, and maintaining that as long as we can a second question on it uh, so since i have actually prior experience with the dds so uh, contributing back to the dds uh, is actually a tough job in in terms of providing the backward compatibility it's actually Bite, bite the maintainers in, in their back when, whenever actually they, they do provide to add. They, they are actually easily comfortable in adding more components, but with, in terms of fixing up the existing components, it, it breaks the backward compatibility. Yes. Uh, so, 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 in term, so in terms of uh, your commitments, uh, I believe that they, they are going to be major releases uh, very often for this. The, yeah, so the release uh, and the, the ongoing sub release scheduling and everything else is a little bit early for us to work out right now. We are putting together an actual uh, product team that will be maintaining and supporting the, pro the product going forward. So we're kind of out of the project initial build phase, now we're putting together a team that will be able to maintain that. So that'll include community managers, it'll include technical development and, um, and other kind of roles to make sure that that project is uh, able to be maintained, but also can feed in uh, feedback, content, contributions. A quick feedback. Uh, uh, you are actually offering both cookie and coffee at the same time, but I'm only <laughs> interested in, in the DDS. So, so you mentioned that if I'll have to actually use the design system, I'll have to actually go with the theme. So uh, are these going to be the separate projects or is it if I'll, I'll have to actually install the theme as well to get the DDS? This design system is going to be the part of the theme. So yes. If I'll only have to use the design system, so... You can use just the Figma design system. You can also use the build as well, is that what you mean? So you mentioned that the, the design system is part of the theme. So yes, if I'm, yes, if I'm yes. to use only the design system, not, not the theme, so... That is possible. <laughs> so are, they, are these separate projects? Thank you. <laughs>
<laughs> they're separate projects in that question. Anyone? Anyway, yes, one here. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, 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 I have two questions. Uh, yes. The first one was on the, or just a quick one on the, the, the gold standard, because you mentioned it's been deprecated. I was wondering what's the current standard now, or is, has Civic Theme now become <laughs> that standard? And then uh, the yeah. second question was um, just, just interested if you could briefly outline how you can, like if you're using the Figma files to do your design, and now you wanted to move it into your theme, like if you could do a brief overview of what's needed in that process to take your designs from the Figma and now put it into your theme and put it into your Drupal site. I may not have time for the second part, but, <laughs> but I'm happy to show you if you want to come down to the booth. At least I'll try and start. The first one is about the, um, the standards. So the Australian Government Design System is CSD commissioned. Um, the gold standard is kind of an unofficial um, framework or to pick up from the AGDS, but there's no official design system if you're talking about government in particular. So there's none. Uh, GovCMS had the AGDS kind of built kind of into the earlier versions, definitely on Drupal 7. On Drupal 9, they made a decision not to um, support kind of any built-in design system into the uh, initial build-outs. So it's uh, we'd like it to be a standard, whether it's the standard, um, we'll see how that goes. But we try to make that informed from as many sources so that it is more usable by as many people as possible. Uh, yeah, so maybe the second one I may, is probably a bit technical here, but we can chat about it if you'd like at the booth. <laughs>